Hey, look at you, all grown up and needing car insurance. You don't have to freak out if you got a driving record that's not so hot or worry if you aren't sure exactly what you need. Able Insurance has your back. Pass up the national insurance companies where you're just another number and keep your auto insurance right here in Charlottesville. 979-0814 is the number. Ableinsurance.com is the site. What up, what up, what up, the Ball Hawk Show? Say one more time. What up, what up, what up, the Ball Hawk Show? After talking to my family, coaching staff, and thinking about it a lot, I decided to forego my senior year of college and declare for the 20, 2019 NBA draft. From day one, I always dreamed about playing at this level since I picked up a basketball. I always dreamed about playing in ACC, playing against Duke and Carolina. This program was everything I could have possibly dreamed of, playing for Coach Bennett every day, playing for the staff, playing with these teammates and for these fans has been a dream come true. I, I wouldn't change one thing. You know, UVA has been a home for me for the last three years. This has been the best basketball experience of my entire life. Since I was a little kid, uh, I always dreamed about playing in the NBA. It's like, the uh, only reason I'm in this position today is because Coach Bennett and my teammates, and they prepared me. They prepared me to get to this point. Thank you to Coach Bennett. Thank you to all my amazing teammates. Thank you to my family, and thank you fans. I will always be a Wahoo. Hey guys, um, it's DeAndre Hunter. I've decided to enter my name in the NBA draft uh, and fulfill a lifelong dream. My last three years at UVA have been magical. The community has really brought me in. Uh, you embraced me as a student and as a member of the community. Playing with this team has been amazing. And these coaches have put me in great positions to be successful. And uh, to my teammates, I want to say thank you as well. I couldn't be here without you guys. It was great playing with you. And off the court, we had our fun moments. On the court, we had our fun moments. And I want to say thank you because I wouldn't be here without you. My family has raised me to be the man I am today. Uh, I couldn't thank them enough. Uh, they do everything for me. No matter how I'm playing on the court, they're always there for me. I mean, basketball is only a small part of my life, but just being the same guy I've been for my whole life and not changing, and no matter how good I become at basketball, I just want to remain the same and not change. I would like to thank God for blessing me with this um, wonderful experience and being able to give me this opportunity to play the game I love at the next level. What up, 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 do? Welcome to the Ball Hawk Show podcast. I'm your host, Ahmad Hawkins, and I thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to the Ball Hawk Show podcast. If this is your first time ever listening to the Ball Hawk Show podcast, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't matter what platform you are reviewing this show, just go make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hit it now. Hit it and leave a review if you're on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. And if you're on YouTube, definitely salute your boy and let me know that you listen to it because I'll respond right to you. Um, if you are on social media, Twitter, Instagram, my handle is at I am Ballhawk. Make sure you follow. And if you want your Shut the Hell Up Juice clothing apparel, go to sthujuice.com. That's sthujuice.com and order your redemption shirt courtesy and a salute to not a courtesy but a salute to the virginia basketball team in the national championship they've been selling like crazy i got a couple left but it definitely some sizes are sold out so you might want to check the site and see if there's any more available so today's episode is a bittersweet episode because we got some who's leaving for the draft when i first initially started recording this and had my script ready it was all about ty jerome and his early entry into the NBA draft. And lo and behold, as soon as I was about to hit record, I get an alert that the Hunter, his best friend, DeAndre Hunter, also declared, which isn't a surprise because in a lot of publications, he be, he's between number five and number 10 as far as prospects. So he's a bona fide lottery pick. And I think everybody, anybody saw that he would be leaving. And it was a lot of speculation about Ty Jerome. 
I've said it since I want to say December. I felt like Ty was leaving because I saw various publications and various uh, scouting reports and things of that nature that had me thinking that, yeah, Ty definitely will leave and test the waters. And then once you saw how successful the team was in the postseason and how well he played, especially in the Elite Eight and then the Final Four game and even the National Championship game, I figured that Ty would leave. So, um, I guess to be fair, I definitely got to discuss DeAndre Hunter. So let's discuss DeAndre Hunter because I think it's less trepidation and less, like I said, less surprise as he's leaving. Okay, DeAndre Hunter is a kid that redshirted. Um, probably was not happy that he redshirted, and um, that redshirt definitely helped him out, helped him mature, and uh, helped him see the game and allow the game to essentially become slower to him because he redshirted that year so even though that redshirt year was tough for deandre hunter it, it was definitely a blessing in disguise uh you fast forward to 2017 2018 season we lose meryl shayok he transferred a guy like deandre hunter is up next nobody knows what to get out of DeAndre Hunter. He was basically the sixth, seventh man off the bench, played 33 games, did not start a single game, averaged 19 minutes a game, ended up winning the sixth man of the year. If I'm not, yeah, won the sixth man of the year, averaged nine points a game, um, a very integral part of our tournament, ACC tournament run. And um, then he hurt his wrist. And it was a lot of rumblings that he could possibly leave last year because he had a first round grade the scouts love what they saw him his size his wingspan uh but with his wrist injured and he missing the tournament the one game we played in the tournament because everybody understood what happened when umbc um he had to make a decision will he return and he ended up returning and boy did he return the kid put on a lot of muscle he basically looked like dwight a little dwight howard he wears number 12 like dwight howard did when he was in orlando and the lakers and all those other teams deandre is 6 7 225 pounds plays phenomenal defense was named the defensive player of the year in college basketball this year um his average went from nine points to 15.2 points a game um he averaged 10 field goal attempts a game he shot 52 percent from the field he also shot 43 percent from three so if you look at his first year of playing, he shot 48% from the field and averaged around six uh, shot attempts a game. Um, and then he shot 38% from three. So he went from 48% from the field to 52% from the field, then 38% from three to 43% from three. And this is with increased shot attempts. Usually you see the field goal percentage drop a little bit with increased shots, but he actually improved on everything. Field goal percentage, three-point percentage. Also, his free throw percentage. Of course, his rebounding went up more minutes. Um, his blocks went up. Um, and we already talked about his points. And his assists went from 1.1 to 2.0. He was always known, seen as the leader, the best player on our team, one of the best players in the country. And he showed on the biggest stage where he dropped Culver off. And he probably dropped Culver in the lottery and elevated himself over Culver because it's hard to say, you know, we'll take Kova over DeAndre Hunter when head to head, he took him to school. He walked the dog with that young man. Salute to that young man for Texas Tech because he's still a lottery pick in his own right. Um, but we all saw and knew this coming. This was coming from DeAndre Hunter. Even though you still got folks saying he should stay another year, which I don't understand. Look, fans, well, no, 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 I ain't, I ain't even going to address that yet. So let's go to Ty Jerome, right? Because like I said, initially... This podcast was for Ty because he was the first, you know, he, he jumped out there first. I didn't know if DeAndre was going to announce today, tomorrow, whatever. And I didn't want to drop a podcast until he announced, not saying that I knew, but I knew. Um, then you go to Ty Jerome, a guy that's been playing viable minutes since he walked on campus. He started five games his first, his first year, played 34 games. Um, he averaged four points, just one assist in 13 minutes a game we saw what he can do when he stepped out versus Villanova and he started playing big on that stage just as a rookie um and then last year he grew into that leader that big shot you better call Ty Jerome was created last year because he started hitting Jays from Thailand shout out to my man Anthony Shiflett um just big shot after big shot we knew he had ice water in his veins um last year he had a, a very good year um but we knew he wasn't leaving. You feel what I'm saying? 
because at, at, at the post game conference after losing in the first round Ty had a chip on his shoulder like he made it among he, he, he made it a point that we're gonna return bigger better and we're gonna do what we set out to do this year but we didn't get get it done and that was winning national championship then you go into this year this season um a lot of people was talking about deandre hunter everybody had high expectations for cal guy and ty was the guy out of the big three that was the least talked about but to me he was always the most important because he did so much for our team right his numbers aren't going to jump out at at people who don't watch virginia basketball you know 13 points five rebounds i mean five assists four rebounds is 5.5 assists led the acc but you got to think about the slow pace in which UVA plays at, and he still averaged 13, 5, and 4. We play at a very slow pace, very methodical, and Ty's a guy who can play at a fast pace, slow pace. His game, he, he's like a chameleon. He can play off the ball. He can run the show. I mean, I would rather him run the show. Six foot five, long wingspan. Um, reminds me of Grievous Vasquez. I used to play at Maryland. Six six point guard that could do it all. Lick his chops at any of the top. Like, anytime... It was supposed to be a guard that was nice. Tower raised his game up to another level. Like he never, ever backed down. Even when we played Purdue and Edwards was going crazy in that first half. If you go back and look at the film of that game, Ty Jerome would answer his big buckets. Even though Edwards was hitting from everywhere, Ty Jerome was the one that was hitting big buckets. It'll be a big three from Edwards, and lo and behold, it'll be a quiet three from Ty. I mean, he ended that game with 24 points. Uh, seven assists and five rebounds, and then he followed up, with, with, followed that game up versus Auburn with twenty-one six and nine, and the infamous double dribble that everybody liked to complain about. And then versus Auburn, he was four seven from three, eight of sixteen from the field overall. And then announced championship game, he was four ten from three, had sixteen points, uh, eight assists, six rebounds. I mean, his numbers in the Final Four run were comparative to the great Magic Johnson. We hadn't seen numbers like that since 1979. You win a national championship. You are the catalyst. You are the guy that threw the pass to DeAndre Hunter, who's also leading for the draft, to hit the three, the centers in the overtime. I mean, Ty Jerome is a dude that a lot of folks are saying, because when you look at various publications, it's a mixture of reviews. He, he could go as high as... Number 20 overall to the Boston Celtics. And then they got him going like 33. So between 20 and 33, that's why they have him falling. Before we go to the pre-draft combines, before we see who's coming out, who's not coming out. Um, all those different reviews that they have into the draft. The most important thing is Tiger signed with an agent as long as it's approved by the NCAA or whatever. And he has until June 10th to withdraw his name at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So he has until June 10th to make a decision if he's going to stay, if he's going to go. Like he can enter his name, get a grade, get a review, go through everything he needs to go through. But the thing about Ty Jerome is Ty Jerome is like that pocket quarterback coming into the NFL draft. I don't care what he does in the 40. I don't care what he does in the vert. I don't care what he does inside the side. Let me see you shoot in person. Let me see your ball handling in person. Let me see you in person. Because the one thing, the information that I got was when scouts saw Ty Jerome and DeAndre Hunter in person on the biggest stage, they were taken back like, man, these kids are bigger than what we thought. And when they saw Ty Jerome, they was like, yo, he is crafty. He's not overly fast. He's not overly quick. But one thing he can do is keep that basketball on the string. He can mesmerize you. He could get to where he want to get to. Guys don't lock up Ty Jerome. I don't care if it was Trey Jones from Duke. Any person somebody thought was a great defender. Ty was getting by them. He was boogieing. And every time he got a switch on a, on a big center, it was barbecue chicken time. Call me from Thailand. But I, I really want to get to the, the stance of Ty should stay. Because he would improve his stock. So there's a lot of folks that's saying Ty should stay because he's not ready. And you got people that are thinking DeAndre Hunter's not ready. And you got people saying, what well, you know, the fan part, the fandom part, and I understand that, and I'm not going at that. The fandom part, we all like not me. I'm not gonna include me because I don't want them to stay. I want them to go achieve their dreams and, and live their dream. Cause that's that's how I met Ty and DeAndre three years ago when they were freshmen, first years. 
um, I spoke at their class. Professor Paul Harris is a good friend of mine. And I talked about my, uh, your mindset, how to achieve your dreams, setting your goals to achieve your dreams and how it is in your DNA, through your dreams of what you really want to do in your life. And if that's all you think about, and that's all you envision yourself being, mapping out a game plan on how to get there. Right. And no, their dream is to play in the NBA. It seems like sports is the it's the one lane, the one lane where we'll tell somebody, put your dream on hold just in case. Right. Put your dream on hold. You need to develop. The money is always going to people say the money is always going to be there. No, it's not because nothing is guaranteed. Nothing in life is guaranteed. We're not promised tomorrow. So we need, we're, we're doing young people a disservice by telling them the money will always be there. Yes, money will always be everywhere. Because everywhere is called getting a job. But maybe the your market value and what it is today is not going to be that tomorrow. Because you just don't know how the market will adjust now you can make more money next year possibly yes but that's a huge risk all right so when folks say yo todd need to stay and get his education get your degree you need to get your education from uva and i tell folks this all the time this education at uva won't leave it's not going anywhere anywhere no matter what he does he could play 10 years in the nba he could go overseas and 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 play for four, five different like your degree will be here. Like if he don't finish, and I heard I, I'm hearing he may finish by June. Just say if he does if he still has to take a year worth of classes. Is that really a big deal? Think about that, folks. Now, don't get me wrong, he won't get a free grant A, and I'm sending quotations, like the school won't, you know pay for his education anymore he had to pay out his own pocket but the opportunity to earn your degree from uva will be here it's not going anywhere so when folks say stay and get your education i'm like why why everybody comes to college to try to find out what they want to do in life right and once you find out what you want to do in life you tell people to attack it to go get it We've seen many, 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 many folks, and not just billionaires, but many people drop out of college and find their trade. But, like sports is a trade in a sense, right? Yes, you need education to go to college, but sports is essentially a trade. I majored in religious studies here at UVA, but football was my trade. And football was what I wanted to do. And I was going to do any and everything to achieve my dream of playing professional football. Whether it was in the NFL, the CFL, NFL Europe, Arena Football League, my dream was to play professional football and get paid to play a sport. That was essentially my trade. Going to class every day at UVA and, and, and earning my credits to remain eligible allowed me to perfect what I truly wanted to do, which ex explore the field in my trade, which was playing football. That's what Ty Jerome is doing. The reason why I understand why Ty is leaving because when I reflect on when he was a senior in high school, he had hip surgery that ended his season at our own prep. Months of rehabilitation, fell under the radar. Before then, he was a top 50 player in the country. So when he got to UVA, he was a, he was like an afterthought. You know, he had to build his body back up. He had to teach himself how to operate at a fast pace. Essentially, just learn how to walk, learn how to run, learn how to be coordinated at a high level. And then you get to UVA and you get to the pinnacle, right? We always kind of reflect on our past. So you're asking the kid who essentially committed to Virginia his junior year, goes into the senior year in New Rochelle, New York. Starts out with a bang, scoring over 30 points in the game. And all of a sudden, he's having a problem with his hips. And they're telling him, you're going to need hip surgery. So you fast forward to UVA, you're in your junior year, like high school, third year. But your junior year, going into your senior year, you had a back injury this year. you like, hey, man, I got to go ahead and jump on the wise hot. I can't take that risk 
of coming back. Yes, I know it's not guaranteed that I will be a first rounder. I know that. But this is my dream. Like you said in this Instagram post, this is a dream that he's had since he was a young boy. Shouldn't we be taking it back and kind of sip shut the hell up juice I'm trying to tell that man, don't go achieve your dream right now. You going too soon when you have, you know, he's at least going to get drafted now. Yeah, we all want guarantees in life, right? If he falls in the first round, that's a guaranteed contract. The elephant in the room is don't be Justin Anderson, right? Everybody saying don't be Justin Anderson. Malcolm stayed for four years. Joe Harris stayed for four years and I tell them that's a mute point because neither Joe Harris or Malcolm Brogdon were on draft boards their third year going to a fourth year as first round picks they did not get first round pick grades at all at all they end up both getting drafted in the second round they both in the NBA right now but people forget that Joe Harris, it took him many years to get to this Brooklyn point to where he's starting and becoming a household name, three-point shooting champion, lead the NBA in, in three-point percentage. People forget that, yes, he went to the G League and played over 20 years, and he stayed for four years. So why are some folks coming at Todd Jerome saying, you can leave early then get stuck in the G League? Well, we had guys stay all four years and still go to the G League. What is the issue if somebody has to go to the G League to fully develop into a better NBA player? What is the issue with that? You're getting compensated. You're still a professional football, I mean, professional basketball player. We're essentially teaching them this model of you have to stay. You have to stay and better prepare for the NBA playing college basketball. Think about that. Oh, those oh, you should you could have stayed and up your stock. Yeah, you could stay and hurt your stock too. So just say if, if, if Ty does come back and his stock drop and he gets no more first round grades, y'all would be like, well, why are you listening to me? I was just giving my everybody gonna say, well, I was just giving my opinion. Now is an opinion when sometimes people stand so firm in their opinion, they make it seem like it's fact. And they start digging up all these examples of what this, look at this player, look at that player. Anytime a person comes back, even Grievous Vasquez, when he, he his junior year at Maryland, his senior year, he averaged damn near 20 points. He was considered the best point guard in America without a shadow of a doubt. Like, you got to be so phenomenal in the scoring department. That's the only way you could truly elevate. When you look at guys that came back for their fourth year and still went high, like a Buddy Head, Buddy Head, high, uh, Buddy Hill for Oklahoma, do average down there 25, 40 damn points a night. Or Damian Lillard. Many years he stayed. Like, you get my, you get my drill. You get my drill. But with Ty... I don't know his family situation. Many times we, we text, we talk. Phenomenal kid. I really talk to him about basketball. I talk to him about regular life stuff. But I'm not going to say, hey, what's your family like? Why are you leaving? I don't know his family situation. We, we, we never know. So when folks be like, oh, that money going to be there next year, maybe the family needs it now. Right? You always got folks say, why would he leave? We don't know their living situation. Sometimes, family, sometimes your needs can't wait an additional year. I'm sorry. Sometimes your needs can't run that risk of you returning. I do know one thing. School will be here. You can come in the off season. You could come you return. You could come nine years. No, not nine. I came back seven years later. Yeah, eight. Take it from a guy who when I was getting, and I wasn't even, I didn't leave early, but I didn't do anything in my spring season. I got ready. I tell the story all the time. I got ready for the NFL draft. I didn't get drafted. Went into practice squad for the Chiefs and went overseas and came play the arena football. Played into the season, uh, the league seats operation for the 2009 season. And I returned to UVA and finished my foreign language requirement and got my degree. I'm talking to somebody who has, who's, who returned to UVA to finish their degree. So when I tell you it's athletes that come back all the time, 
It don't get no fan. It's not going to get any fanfare. Everybody can't be Greg Oden and be on the front street and they showing you he completed his degree after he had a failed career due to injury. When people call him a bust, but he made millions of dollars, he can invest into his life and then he can go back to school because he can afford to pay for his class. And guess what? With his degree, what he's still going to try to do? Coach. That's why I call sports a trade because essentially, if you invest into your trade, right? Just, I could... Just, just say Ty Jerome go play a couple years basketball, six, seven years out the NBA. Or everybody love to use Justin Anderson as an example. So Justin Anderson been playing in the NBA for what, three or four seasons now? Basically a rotation guy. And everybody loves to just throw Justin under the bus. He should have stayed. His stock would have improved. But they fail to forget he still was a first rounder. Getting paid millions to play a sport living the dream a million to at least one million dollars a year to play sports think about that for a year i mean for a minute think about that basically he's made around like eight million dollars so far playing professional basketball let that let, 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 let that marinate eight million dollars And we really saying to him, well, he could end up like Justin. Like it's a bad. Is that really bad? He in his fourth year in the NBA. Is that really bad to end up like, oh, you can end up like Justin Anderson and be at the end of the bench? What's the what's the what's the problem? I'm being honest with y'all. Like, what's what's the issue? Is that really an issue? Would you really not want to be Justin? Anderson? Like, think think about it, bro. If your dream was to be a baseball player, right? And you in the minors all these years, and all of a sudden you catch on in the MLB, and for 10 years you was a a a sub. A sub. And you making upwards to a million dollars a year as a sub, a rotational player. Is that really bad? That's what we doing. It must really suck to be Justin Anderson, right? Whoa, don't be Justin. Don't make a million dollars and still living out your dream. You may not play. You ain't playing that much. But, hey, don't be Justin. We forget about Joe. When Joe was in Cleveland for the two seasons, going back and forth to the G League, finally got his break in, in Brooklyn, and then this year at 27 years old, he started 76 games at 27 years old. Right now, Justin Anderson is 25. He's 25 years old. Still young. And the fact that he came out, they, he still has potential. And that's what the NBA draft is. Potential. What's your potential? If you came out early, you got a lot of potential because you came out early. But if you Malcolm Brogdon and you stay off four years, and even though you've been busting everybody high pots, and you clearly one of the best, the top 30 players in the world eligible for the draft, and they say, well, you old though, so your ceiling not that high. And then you fall to the Bucks. And you got a guy like a Jason Kidd that's like, ooh, this this kid, hey, hey, I got me a gym here. I got me a gym. But everybody wants to use Justin Anderson like it's a bad thing. Like, thank you to that UVA fans. Come on. Don't end up like Justin Anderson. Really? Really? Michael Brown in his third year right now. He's 26 years old. Just Anderson still 25. <laughs> Yo, think about that. The boy still just 25 years old. GMs, scouts, they still see that. He still got a lot of basketball left in his career. Just say if Justin had to go overseas like Devin Hall or Leonard Parentes. They still getting paid to play. Are we that narrow-minded and, and 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 blinded that we just feel like, hey, you go to the NBA, you better be a starter or you should have stayed in school. You got dudes who were stars in the NBA that came and cracked the starting lineup and they stayed all four years. Look at Grayson Allen from Duke. He should have left after his first year. 
it was so much intrigue for that young man and, and then what he did versus Wisconsin in the national championship game that he stayed and then had to keep continuing to stay and before you know it they forgot that he was a super athlete that he could jump out the gym they forgot all about that because he was known for the trips he was known for the antics but if he would have left it would have still been intrigued that well we know this boy could jump out the gym it's crazy I just think I, I I don't know man I just like I said I get it that that we become selfish as fans and and we want guys to stay because we want to watch them in person and we always feel that guys like guys aren't ever ready for the NBA until they get there and they start living the life of an NBA player and they start training with NBA players. Nobody's ever ready for the NBA right now. Like it's a part of that game that's not ready for the NBA. That's underdeveloped. I always say with Justin Anderson, Justin Anderson had to leave. He had to. He was shooting the lights out at UVA before he got hurt. And when he came back, he was struggling a little bit. And it's like, whoop, hey, dog, you need to leave. You got to go. He was shooting better than 50% before he got hurt. He still ended up shooting 45% from three that year at UVA before he left. Average 12 points. You got to think about that. He averaged 12 points still winning the first round. Entry, and that's what Ty Jerome got right now. Entry, that's what DeAndre Hunter had last year as a six man. He had a first round grade as a six man. Y'all, do, do, do y'all hear me? Do you do you hear me? Playing 19 minutes. Look at Cam Reddish for Duke. Oh my God, he is a lottery pick. And everybody and their mama saw he struggled to do, but they know he was deferring to the biggest gunner in basketball and R.J. Barrett, who's going to be a top three pick. And then you had the freak of nature and Zion Williams. You got people saying Zion not ready. I look, look, ain't nobody ready. I'm saying that in air quotations, but some dudes just get buckets. Ty Jerome, he get buckets. You better call Ty Jerome. Call him. Ty, man, super proud of you, bro. Appreciate all our conversations over the years, man. We definitely going to stay in contact. Um, thank you for all you've done for the university. Help lead the way to our first national championship. DeAndre Hunter, same to you, brother. Appreciate everything you've done. Appreciate just your willingness just to be great. Be patient And um, your time came You rose to the occasion Both of you guys man Appreciate everything you've done for the university Continue to represent the university On the next level I know both of you guys would do well Ty man They doubted you when you came to UVA They doubted you this year They doubted you on the big stage Just because you don't be dunking on folks You're not super fast But I do know one thing you got That can't be taught And it's that heart and your competitive edge is like no other. It's contagious. It's infectious. It's Tom Brady-esque. The way you just want to prove daughters wrong. So use it for few, man. Put that chip on your shoulder. You from New Rochelle, New York. You've been doing this for a minute. Ever since you was young, you picked up the basketball. You know. You know when they see you, they are. <laughs> Him? Yeah. He ain't that nice. So that's all I got for y'all, man. Good is the enemy of great. Be great in everything that you do. Um, salute these two young men. Um, nobody is right or wrong in how they feel about these young men leaving. If you wanted them to stay and you felt like they're not ready and you felt like they needed education, you're not wrong. That's your thoughts. That's your opinion. That's your feeling. More power to you. And if you're on the other side and you think the iron is hot, they did all they could do at UVA leave now. You write in your opinion, you write in your thoughts and your stance. At the end of the day, I don't want anybody ever thinking that me behind this mic is trying to tell them that they're wrong for the way that they feel. All I'm doing is providing my opinion, putting some substance behind my opinion, and hopefully it was entertaining for this 30 minutes for you to get through what you had to get through in your day. You might be working third shift. You might be listening to this on the drive to work, home, from work. But it's the ball hawk. Oh, I'm out of here. I want the whole world spin my record. Shay Rome, the hoodie styles, check game, stay free records. Show the girl fed the death in a massage. Bad news, even be massaging. I got a fitted hip, I be massaging. Pinky rings on my finger, I'm massaging. I got a speedboat constant, cause I massage. I come and do about a whole account of large. I be massaging. 
I be massaged I'm coming through with Cadillacs and massaging Yeah, both some constantly massaging I got GPS, I be massaging I catch croaker fish cause I'm massaging I like a macaroni plate, I be massaging Even oodles and noodles, I be massaging Turn out the ghetto, cause I'm massaging I got ice around my neck cause I'm massaging I even go chief, I massaging A pinky ring iced out cause I'm massaging I got a hundred million dollars, I be massaging I got ten dollars, I be massaging I got a thousand dollars, I be massaging I got twenty-two cents and be massaging I took a penny and be massaging I tell shorty girl fat, I be massaging Your big two, I be massaging I be massaging, I be massaging I got a GPS stern with massaging Whole shit road chain be massaging I got a Uzi, I be massaging I got a 12 gauge pump, I massage I got a hundred thousand, I massage I Ain't broke, I be massaging I stay paid I be massaging, I stay late, I be massaging, I hit the pool all night cause I'm massaging, she wanna come through loaded and massage, whole cheese, we massage, bad new posse constantly massage, ain't no joke, I be massaging, even the bacon and eggs I be massaging, huh, polo shirts, Santo Adidas, I be massaging, I love you sweetie cake, spin my record, let me give you the game, on how to get rich Take a penny And flip a penny Then 40 billion Uh-huh, why? I be massaging What? Car stern wheel I be massaging The whole, the whole label Of the state free records In the VA oh, We be massaging Let's have a money shot